Hi, you guys. It is a talk to Miss Eris. It is the Pretty Coach here. And I am coming to share some information on Moon and Capricorn. And I have chosen that sign because, well, the moon is currently in the sign of Capricorn. So, yeah. That is my motivation. I'm also going to read Sun in Pisces energy as well. So, let's hop into it. All right, it says a moon in Capricorn modifies your sun sign in this way. The bright side of Capricorn moon, it says you are more determined, responsible, disciplined, patient, and committed. The dark side of Capricorn moon is you are more rigid, pessimistic, opinionated, materialistic, and over exacting. <clears throat> Please forgive me, guys. I'm getting over a cold. And those who watch my videos, you already know this. But yeah, for those who might be new and coming across me for the very first time, I apologize. All right, here we go. So let's see what I want to read for y'all. All right, it says Capricorn has both a stabilizing and restrictive effect on the shifting influence of the moon. The moon represents the emotional, sympathetic side of a personality, whereas Capricorn is an unemotional and undemonstrative sign. So pause, pause. I absolutely disagree with that. Not that anybody asked me, but I disagree with that. I have had a Capricorn father, and in my opinion, my father was very emotional. He just he didn't want his emotions to rule him so he really tried to master his emotions um he was very emotional so i'm just gonna say that <clears throat> but i will say the part that may be more accurate is that they're undemonstrative and that's not even really true either um they don't have like super romantic gestures their romantic gestures are when they do something useful for a person you know what i'm saying like if they if you need something and they can get it for you they're gonna do that so that's their romance <laughs> anyway moving on um people <clears throat> with the moon in this position have to overcome obstacles and complexities within their own natures to find the happiness that they constantly seek if you have the moon in Capricorn, you have an alert mind and are very eager to learn. However, you are not interested in vague theory. You want to put your knowledge to use. So an example of this talent for practical application is Thomas Edison, a moon Capricorn whose son was an Aquarius. In Edison, we see the inventive, <clears throat> far-reaching vision of the Aquarian truth seeker but the focus of his work was to make his experiments useful. To put them into work was to make his experience, wait a minute. But the focus of his work was to make his experiments useful, to put them into everyday utilization. His inventions of the telegraph, phonograph, electric light, and moving picture changed the way that we live. I'ma say this, um, if y'all don't know by now that <clears throat> he didn't invent a lot of this stuff, that it was other people that did i'm gonna be the person to tell you he didn't invent half the shit that they talk about he invented however he was the uh <clears throat> a part of the ruling class okay and so he was the face of the operation moving on let's see uh, 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 uh but i guess he had a hand in it somehow so another example of the capricorn moon is gene kelly whose son was on the leo burger cusp <clears throat> in his life, we saw the creativity and exuberance of Leo and the hard work, the hard work ethic of Virgo. But his Capricorn moon was evident in how he took his knowledge of dancing and applied it in a practical way to film choreography. Okay. For those who are aware of him. Um, it says, if you have a moon in Capricorn, then you are organized, ambitious. And usually a prodigy, wait a minute, a prodigious worker, self-sufficient and a bit solitary. 
You are haunted by a feeling of responsibility of a task that you must fulfill. Now, I'm going to say that that's true. Even though my moon is not in Capricorn, my Mars is. And um, <clears throat> I do have this feeling that there is something that I am meant to do. Um, and I can't stop working or trying to figure out what it is until I, until I feel like I master it. So that's my Capricorn placement. It says you are a determined person, but your single mindedness can sometimes turn into obsession. You pin your hopes on one idea, turn all your energies in one direction. And if you fail, you may suffer serious depression. Of course, because of their unshakable commitment, most lunar Capricorns succeed and often make an imprint on the world. Napoleon Bonaparte, George Washington, and Abraham Lincoln all had their moon in Capricorn. Lunar Capricorns who have their sun or ascendant in one of the cardinal signs like Aries, Cancer, Libra, um, <clears throat> or Capricorn have particularly auspicious auguries for leadership. Money is important to you. Not so much for what it can buy as for the status it bestow. Okay, not so much for what it can buy as for the status it can bestow in the world of business, politics, finance, and high society where you wish to shine. You have charming social manners and an instinct for getting to know the right people. That is so freaking true. And I'll even venture to say when Capricorn is in their rawest form, they are the type of people that strategically, um, it, like if they have an idea of where they want to be and where they're trying to go, then they are going to do a little bit of research, honey. And they are going to position themselves in the building or they're going to reach out <clears throat> somehow to have relationship with people that they feel can help them get to where they're trying to go. That is a true statement. And ask me, how do I know that? Because my Mars is in Capricorn. And when I was in my purest, rawest form, I didn't, I, I, and I don't say this um, pridefully, but I'm just saying this. I literally sought out opportunities and I sought out people who I felt could help me get to where I was trying to go. And I would absolutely develop um, associations and maybe even friendships with them. <clears throat> anyway, moving on. And please excuse me. I'm sorry. All right. Um, it says, unknown to all but your closest intimates, you suffer from feelings of insecurity and loneliness. Often, you conceal this with a dry sense of humor. Your secret terror is of being abandoned or having someone that you love cease to love you. I want to say that that's everybody's secret ass um, fears, but it may not be. So I'm not going to speak that way. But I, I, I understand this, Moon and Capricorn. I can identify with this. <coughs> it says you find it hard to reveal your deepest feelings and therefore may be perceived as cold or calculating. You see what I'm saying? They tell you that Capricorn is not emotional, but that's a lie. They just have a hard time showcasing their emotions. Um, I feel that Capricorn has to feel safe with the person because it's an earth sign energy. So they have to feel like you ain't going nowhere. So it's going to take time. They have to vet you and they have to, they have to see if you're like a steadfast person, if you're going to be around before they just reveal their shit to you, period. Um, let's see. <clears throat> Lunar Capricorns tend not to find true love in you. Cautious and reserved, you tend to turn your feelings inward and you need a lot of emotional reassurance before you allow them to be drawn out. You also have, so emotional assurance would be like, okay, if a person makes you feel like they really, really care about you, that's when you will, and, and that may look different for each Capricorn, but that is the only time that you'll really open up and, and really show the depth of your emotion um, to a person. If you don't feel safe emotionally, you not, nope, you not finna open them, you not finna open up that well because it is a well. 
I don't know why they be lying, talking about these posts. It ain't even that they don't even just do this for Capricorn. They do this for a lot of the people. Everybody that they actually say is not emotional. In my observation, those are some of the most emotional motherfuckers. They are so deeply emotional that they work so hard to appear non-emotional. So moving on. That's just that is Jude's two cents. I said it. I meant it. Moving on. <clears throat> okay. It says you also have difficulty putting your complete trust in someone. But at some point, usually when you are past like 30, you find the person that you can become totally involved with. And then your love is durable. When you feel secure within an emotional relationship, your commitment may last your entire lifetime. Now, I didn't go deep talking about the entire lifetime, but didn't I say when they feel safe and secure, that's when you're going to that's when you going to feel them. You going they're going to let they love come through. Excuse me. You are loyal and steadfast, generous and giving. In fact, you often give more than you get back. <clears throat> this is especially true about the relationships of female lunar Capricorns to their lovers and friends. If any of this made any type of sense to you and it resonates, give this video a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, and uh, 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 you like the way that I just shared this information and stuff like that. And if you're interested in seeing more, go ahead and make sure that you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. Do all things so that way you won't miss nothing I got going on, okay? I do this periodically from time to time. If you are interested in the book, it is called The Only Astrology Book You'll Ever Need by Joanna Martine Woolfolk, okay? That is the end of this read. Oh, why am I ending it, y'all? <clears throat> I told y'all I was going to read Sun and Pisces. Let's hurry up and use Sun and Pisces. I'm not going to do all that that I read for them because that's just too long and I don't feel like it right now. But I do want to, I do want to read it for y'all because we in the sign of Pisces. <clears throat> all right, let's see. That's the moon in Cancer. Scorpio Capricorn. Where's Pisces? Here we go. All right. So just to make it easy. Excuse me. <laughs> to make this a quick read for me. I'm actually just going to read about how to attract the Pisces. So if some of you guys um, are interested in a person who has this placement in their chart, um, yeah, you might want to pay attention. And I'm going to say the placement, I feel like it could be anywhere. It doesn't just have to be their sun sign. All right, here's what it says. You can always interest them in conversation about the world of entertainment, arts, books, poetry, and dramatics. Another sure way to get their attention is to discuss any topic touching on the occult mysticism, spiritualism, and the supernatural, particularly anything involving reincarnation. Pisces who don't actually believe in it, <clears throat> which aren't many, are fascinated by discussions about it. Um, tell them your problems. They're great listeners and their sympathy is mostly genuine, but avoid giving the appearance of being overwhelmed by your problems. While Pisces have an unusual compassion for losers, <laughs> Why did they say, why did she do this for losers? They prefer people who are strong and supportive with definite goals and a positive approach for life. Hold on. <coughs> Excuse me. A good compromise tactic is to discuss your difficulties humorously. Pisces like to laugh and will be impressed by your ability to smile your troubles away. Ask them about a subject they know well. Now, remember that Pisces are artistic or at least have a real appreciation for the arts. So you can hardly go wrong moving in that direction. Pisces will soon open up. In fact, your problem may be getting back in control of the conversation. Pisces love to expound and explain and expatiate. So in other words, they actually talk a lot. They can, okay? Here we go. <clears throat> Always greet them with a compliment about their appearance or social presence. Or remember to repeat a flattering comment someone else made about them. Pisces soaks up flattery like the Sahara soaks up water. Above all, be sentimental. 
Remember each birthday and anniversary. Pisceans are grateful and they don't forget kindness or thoughtfulness. You'll be richly rewarded. Okay, now that is all. Peace, love, light, and darkness, which all work together to bring balance and harmony first within ourselves and then within our world. If you are new here to the channel, guys, um, <clears throat> I am a person who is like a mystic or whatever. And I read tarot. I do oracle readings, oracle card readings, and other types of things. Um, and I have a membership. So if you guys are interested in joining that membership, you can make sure to find it somewhere on any one of my videos. It, you'll, it'll say join. Be sure to um, look into the memberships and what they offer. Um, if you're a person who are interested in learning things more about astrology and stuff like that, you'll want to join the membership. If you are interested in learning about tarot, join the membership. Um, <clears throat> what else? I also have a, a little thing that I do. It's called Sexy Tarot. And I like to kind of dress up a little bit in some pretty cute negligee and read tarot for people. So um, if that's something that you would also be interested in, be sure to join that uh, membership as well. Okay, that is all. Peace, love, light, and darkness again, which all work together to bring balance and harmony first within ourselves and then within our world. Good night, you guys.